this is Joe from SelfSufficientPath.com. As some of you may know, I recently bought a muzzleloader. I'm going to be hunting with muzzleloader for the first time this year. And I've got a little um, synthetic bag, um, I'll show a picture of it here, um, that I carry my muzzleloader things in. But I really wanted a more traditional bag. Um, and as you probably all know by now, I am a leather worker. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be building a gusseted possibles bag. Uh, kind of in the mountain man style and there's a little bit of a twist on this one so stay tuned to the end to see that so most of the time when I'm doing leather working I'm building a sheath or a holster or something like that I prefer to work straight off of the object so if I'm building a you know a sheath or a knife I'm going to use the knife um, to, fo to wet form the case and uh, build it that way I don't use patterns very often I mean, if you're going to be doing uh, repeatable stuff, if you're going to be making the same object over and over again, patterns are absolutely necessary. Uh, but in this case, what I really need is something to help me get the dimensions and make sure everything, all the pieces are going to fit together. So what I've done is I've sketched out um, a rough drawing, not a rough drawing, actually a final drawing, of the profile of the front, which will also be a mirror of the profile of the back. And uh, I'm going to put this down, I'm going to cut it out, put it down on some cased leather, um, which means some leather that's been wetted and allowed to dry a little bit, and then I'm going to mark this out. Okay, so I've cased the leather, leather. <clears throat> I've cut out the pattern. I'm going to put it down here on the leather. The leather's damp, but it started to dry back out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a stylus, I'm going to mark my corners just as reference points in case this moves while I'm doing this. Um, and I've got a set of wing dividers here. Now this is the pattern is the size I want the front of the bag, but I need to leave additional room for stitching. So what I'm going to do here is run this along the outside of the pattern. mark my leather both for the outside the outside dimension of the bag and also for the cut line to allow myself room for stitching now that I've got that done I'm going to connect the two points and with a straight edge I'm going to mark that. So that's the front of my bag. Now you'll know I've notice I've got the pattern marked front and back. Now I don't have to turn this leather over and cut it from the back to uh, to make this work, but I do need it to be mirror image. Uh, so what I can do to cut it from the front, I can just flip this over so that the back is up and cut it that way, and that'll give me um, kind of the right alignment. Okay, a couple of points to make here. First of all, I said I was going for an authentic look here. Not really. Um, most of the, let's call them original uh, Possibles bags, were not gusseted. They were flat bags. They were a front piece of, of leather and a back piece of leather stitched together. Um, and that was your Possibles, Possibles bag. So it's not really authentic. Second of all, you'll notice I've got some dirt and some of the places where I'm putting, um, where I'm cutting this out, have some fairly minor scarring. If I was doing a, um, a piece for a customer, I probably would not use um, these pieces of leather. But again, this is for a, <laughs> a possible's bag. It's, it's supposed to look a little rough. It's supposed to look a little beat up. So I'm not, also, I'm not going to concern myself over much with a, a scar here or there or a, uh, you know, a little bit of dirt. I'm not really going to worry too much about it. Now at the top here, at the top of the front, you'll notice that I didn't leave room for stitching. There's not going to be any stitching on the top. But this piece, the back, <clears throat> I am going to have to leave room for the flap to come over atop, uh, atop the gusset and then also down the front piece. Now rather than get stingy with my leather, I'm going to get fairly, um, how to say it, I'm going to be rather 
liberal with it because I what I don't want to do is get to the end of this, get everything stitched together, get this whole thing built, and find out that my front uh, only comes down halfway uh, on the front piece. So I'm going to leave a significant amount of scrap here to be sure I've got enough. So our next step is to cut out, die, and glue together the pieces that are going to hold the D-rings that the straps will attach to. Okay, so here you can see a little bit about what this pattern is going to look like. You can see, I hope you can see what the stitching is going to look like, where the rivets are going to be. Um, and what I've done is I've taken and copied one of those, printed it out. Um, I've cut out around the outside so that I can see on the leather where it's going to go and make sure I'm not getting any scars or any any really bad spots in the leather. Um, I didn't cut out this part. It doesn't need to be cut out. I can just trace over it. So our first one, I believe, is going to go about right here. <clears throat> so I don't know if you can see that, but we've got our two patterns um, laid out and ready to cut. Anytime you're cutting uh, thick leather like this, you really want to make sure and keep your knife vertical when you're cutting. Um, make sure you don't get in your own light either. So next we have to dye these pieces. I'm using Phoebing Sats. I have no idea if I'm saying that right. Phoebing Saddle Tan uh, for this piece. A little lighter brown. Um, so we're going to dye these pieces and then we're going to slick the parts of these pieces that when assembled will be a single layer of leather. In other words, the parts here that uh, that are going to hold the, the actual D-ring. Okay, so here's one of the mounts for the, uh, for the straps that are going to go on the side of the bag. I've just put the rivets there so you can see kind of where they're going to go. Um, it's roughed out. Um, I still have to glue it up. I still have to stitch it. I still have to sand it and uh, slick the edges, but that's what they're going to look like. Uh, the dye is still wet too, so uh, they'll lighten up in color a bit. So my next step is to cut the gusset. And I don't have a cutting mat long enough, so I'm going to have to kind of score this and then cut part of it and move the cutting mat and cut the rest of it. I'm going with five and a half inches wide. Um, the overlap here where I'm going to stitch on the inside is going to be three-eighths of an inch. So if I go with five and a half, that gives me uh, essentially four and three-quarter inches uh, finished width on the bag. So that's what we're going with. 